Amen. Praise the Lord. We will hear um, two testimonials or testimonies. One is uh, from Pastor Luke in the UK. Another one is from Pastor Gideon. Pastor Luke, you told me something about um, what the Lord uh, made you to know when I sent information to you. You need to tell them what I sent to you and what you saw. And Gideon, you need to also tell the congregation what God made you to know and which you presented unto the people with you in Abuja before we take what we have. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord made me know that the Three Food End Time Project pamphlet is a blueprint for the watchman to work with. Apart from that, he said the kind of uh, that he shows us the time now. The kind of workers to raise. The kind of congregation the watchmen should raise. The kind of people that should be the pastors. And the reward in the now and after. Where that is leading us. That was point number one. Point number two. Equally made me know. That what we are doing is the need of the hour. Which the devils know. And they have fought against the man of God. And against this ministry. And that we are at the last lap. That God wants us to persevere. And move forward. And that we are going to break into something else. Where the world will look for us. Praise the Lord. Finally, he made me know that the, the, the kingdoms of darkness is against this man of God. That it is not just killing him, that they would have, that what if it is not the Lord, they would just frustrate him. There was a word he used. After doing that, make him miserable so that nobody thinks the way he is thinking. Or go in this mission he is going. Praise the Lord. That uh, one of the days I had a, a, a meeting with the pastors. But before that meeting, the Lord has given me a message and said I should share it with the man of God. And uh, I was afraid because I had spoken with him before. So I held my peace only to come in and see two missed calls from the man of God. And he told me that there is a message the Lord said I should share with him. And then I gave him the message that the, he said by 5 a.m. the next morning that he will give me a call. But before that time, I had already gotten the message. So by 5 a.m. the next morning when he gave me a call, I needed to let him know what God said. That anybody that this project, the threefold end time project, that this is the blueprint. That's the word God used. Blueprint of the need of the hour. Of what he has given unto him. And that this is the blueprint of what he wants him to do for the church, for the world, and what he wants us to do. And equally the blueprint of the blessings of God. That if we follow these things as he said, that all the cries, people are crying and uh, lamenting for one thing or the other, that it will, is no story. That he has already given the answers to the questions we are asking. Praise and, the Lord. Hallelujah. And Pastor Gideon, you, you also shared with me what he told the people in uh, Abuja concerning what we are doing. You were telling me that you told them that if anybody wasn't going to follow even what is written in this book, they should leave the church. Okay, that was, uh, was uh, some years ago. 
that I went back to studying this threefold end time project and um, I got a startling revelation about those things stated and I had to tell the church that uh, any person who wants to be part of the ministry and who wants to get to where we're going has to key into uh, what things that are written there. Now, but uh, recently you called me and um, you asked me to uh, pray to God to find out about uh, fulfilling this uh, vision by your hand. And um, as I went to God to talk to him, the Lord made it clear to me that the vision of the watchman is given to a man and that there are not two persons that have the knowledge of what God wants us to do. And because of that, the man that he gave the vision will surely fulfill it no matter what was happening or what is happening. The Praise vision the was very, very clear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let us pray. Oh, good must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man, no man who play glory to himself. All the glory must be, all the glory must be, all the glory must be to the Lord. Take it now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Boy, is one day of a prayer. No man, no who do our glory to himself. All the glory must be. All the glory must be. All the glory must be to the Lord. All the glory must be. All the glory must be. All the glory must be to the Lord. Amen. All the glory must be. All the glory must be. All the glory must be. To the Lord. One more time. All glory. Eternal Father, we want to bless your name, dear Lord of our salvation. 
Thank you because of the fact that you are with us. And there is none else other than yourself, great Father in heaven. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Hallelujah. Thank you for your power. Thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you for everybody, Lord in glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for the ladies. Thank you for the gentlemen. Thank you for everybody that is in attendance, Lord in glory. Thank you for the journey mercies that you granted on us. And the one that you are going to grant while we are going back. These things are guaranteed. Thank you for your spirit. The spirit of soundness of mind. The spirit of power. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of creation and recreation. Thank you very, very much. The spirit of good health. Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Receive the glory and the honor and the praise and the power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and we are created. All the glory must be to the Lord. No glory should be given to any man. Because it is of him that uh, giveth and showeth mercy. It is not of him that uh, will it. It is not of him that runneth. It is of God which showeth mercy. It is not by mind. It is not by power. It is by my spirit, said the Lord. What is the mountain, even the obstacle? That is before Zerubbabel. That mountain would be made flat. And the rubber will take the capstone and shout in grace, grace to it. We bless your name. Well, thank you because of your superiority over all spirits. You are the father of all spirits. And shall we not be in subjection to the father of all spirits that we may live? We should be in subjection to the father of all spirits. Thank you for the information that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. He said that I return to my father and to your father. And to my God and to your God. While he was in the flesh, you helped him through and through. Now that we are in the flesh, you are bound to help us through and through. In the name of Jesus Christ. Precious father, you cannot do contrary to your word. You cannot command us to keep your word and you don't keep your word because you are not a man. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be Jesus Christ who is at the right hand side of the majesty on high. And blessed be the spirit of God that is hovering all over the world. That was given at Pentecost and he has not returned. He's going to return at the rapture and then the world will go into chaos. And everybody will know that somebody owns the whole universe. Thank you very much, Lord. I pray that every person in the eternal rock of ages that belongs to this ministry will have his or her eyes of understanding opened appropriately, adequately. Grandfather in heaven, there are very many people that are following erroneous theologies and erroneous ideologies. And they are very, very committed. Their, their blood is peeled and they don't care about it. Lord, I wonder how then we could be holding the truth and then holding it lousily as if God is not God anymore. Precious Father, I pray, do not let these people become our judge in the name of Jesus Christ. Error is thriving on every corner, and every nook and cranny. Lord, and truth should thrive more than error. And let the truth in our hand thrive more than errors all around in the name of Jesus, so that the light will conquer darkness. Remember that the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We praise you because we know the answer. As we review even what you have with us, 
and go through the question who is on the side of the vision, the project. Lord, I pray that every person without exception that is in this place, great Father in heaven, we make a decision that matters. The decision of being on the side of the Lord and on the side of the vision and on the side of the vision. Because that determines what will happen to us for the rest of our lives. Glory be to God for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. What we have come to review is, uh, or to talk about is, uh, who is on the side of the vision or on the pro of the project. We have already looked at who is on the side of the law. We have shown the decadence all over the places. We drew from what uh, happened in the day that Israel was uh, going to the promised land. The decadence that took place at the point in time, the abomination. And then there was a necessity to call, to draw the line by the man of God. And call on the people and saying, who is on the side of the Lord? Let, me, let him come over to me. And there was a segment of the people that knew what was at stake and rushed to him. And then that segment of the people became the blessed of the Lord all throughout their generations. They accepted of the Lord because they decided to throw away to rebuff and to repent of uh, the abomination they were involved in and to pitch tent with the law. And then we show that it is time for every one of us to be on the side of the law. Now we are talking about who is on the side of the vision. What vision are we talking about? I'm talking about the threefold end time project. Who is on the side of that vision? That vision was uh, given a number of years ago, and you know that it was it is it is on the on the on the note of this vision that IGMC International Gospel Ministers Conference commenced and carried on for seven consecutive years, bringing thousands of people at huge expense to, 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 our, to our place of worship, and then sharing the vision with them. And, um, and the vision is as follows, that God is raising a great army of Christians from among the various denominations for an imminent great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God. Two, bringing about a great harvest of souls proper and a great revival in the entire church. And three, fulfilling what the Lord termed the pre rapture necessity, bringing about a great army of believers from among the various denominations. Now, and then for an imminent harvest of souls, then bringing about the harvest of souls proper as it was during the apostolic era. Remember that during the apostolic era, a was great harvest of souls into the kingdom of God, great revival. And that is what the Lord wants to reproduce. And then Bert is uh, wanting to use an instrument. The instrument is the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Remember that this ministry 
was born out of concern for the Roman Catholic uh, uh, adherents. And then, and then um, we went on and went on, and then uh, the thing was narrowed down to now this threefold end time project. And if you look at the threefold end time project, you will find that it includes that thing which we began with, the fivefold vision which we began with. That is being a means of light unto the people in those Jerusalems, in those orthodox places, and bringing them from ignorance unto the knowledge of Christ and the riches therein, and then being a source of uh, means of salvation unto all the other multitudes outside Christendom, and then being a means of unifying the church, and then a means of uh, delivering and healing, bringing healing and the power of God to be upon the people, and then uh, an instrument of warning, fivefold vision. And if you look at uh, the threefold end time project, you find that it has encompassed all the things that we have been doing. In the recent past, I told uh, the same pastor that we must return to uh, that which we began with and uh, that we will do by the grace of God. Now, in the book with you, we, you have uh, analysis of uh, the project. Analysis of the project simply means the, the details of uh, the project. We are talking about the three-foot end time project. But before we go into the analysis of the project, let me give you some clue as to what has been designed in Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, following the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Now, Peter stood up and preached a profound message uh, as a result of the uh, mockery of uh, some people who did not understand what was happening because they were speaking in tongues, speaking in various languages. And some people, some people among the crowd that gathered said they were drunken. And then the apostle said, how could they be drunken at the hour, the third hour of the day, which uh, was just 9 a.m. That it was that which was uh, promised by God through the prophet Joel. In the last days I pour out of my spirit. And then as he explained that, went on preached Jesus unto the listeners. And on and on how he was uh, sent by God, but how that the people crucified him, killed him, hanged him on the tree. But God raised him up. And as he marshaled out the truth without fear, this time around full of boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, there were multitudes that questioned, made inquiry, and said, I'm asked this question by start 37 of chapter 2 of Acts of Apostles. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked, they were convicted in their hearts, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And they shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me digress here. If you have uh, 
become born again and you have repented, you become born again, you are regenerated and you have not uh, been baptized in water, immersion, baptism, please uh, seek to get baptized in water by immersion. It is uh, necessary. Then, Verse 40 says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this unto one generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And then, 3,000 souls is not a small number. And then as they went on, shortly, as we will see in chapter 4, we have this uh, record. Chapter 3, we have this record. Peter and John had gone to the temple at the hour of prayer, even being the ninth hour. The ninth hour is 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And somebody that was lame from his mother's womb that was all the time at the gate, beautiful gate, asking uh, arms, was healed dramatically, and the people gathered together. And then he gave him opportunity again to preach Jesus Christ unto the people. And he did the preaching, but persecution arose. But before the persecution arose, multitudes of people had already given their lives to given in to what he said and believed in Jesus and become disciples as is recorded and uh, in as of Apostle chapter 4 and um, verse uh, 3 says and there laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day that is uh, the Sanhedrin for it was now even time how be it, however, many of them which had the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. So you are talking about 8,000 added to what they were. And then, shortly after that, then they went on and ministered and then began to they live in the, uh, in the first uh, century or the apostolic era, oneness of mind and commitment and love for one another. And then people began to wheel out uh, their properties and then in order to help. And until one man and uh, his wife uh, got into some mess that took their lives away. And then... As that happened, the fear fell upon the people. And we have this record of what continued to happen. Now, in chapter 5 of uh, As of Apostles, and verse 12, we have this record. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest doth no man uh, join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, in so much that they brought for the sick into the streets and led them on bears and couches. But at the least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone. Now multitudes were added. In Acts of Apostle chapter 6, we are still reviewing the apostolic era. Chapter 6, verse 1. In those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, your geometrical uh, progression, number of disciples greatly multiplied, greatly multiplied, 
greatly multiplied. So you're not talking about hundreds, you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands. Now, and persecution arose at the death of Stephen, the first martyr of the church, Jesus Christ, and then the people scattered everywhere, wherever they went, they carried the word. It was fantastic. It was, it was another thing altogether. Another thing altogether. They carried the word. They carried the fire. And that was great, great awareness. And it is what God wants to replicate this time around. Raising a great army from among the denominations. And using that army from among the denominations to bring about a great harvest of souls. And we are talking about uh, what happened in times past, about what happened in times past is uh, what is what is scheduled to happen this time around is uh, cannot be compared to what happened in times past because we have uh, the need in the world uh, is such that God needs to check it. If you were God, would you not want to check the world? I'm asking you. Please, we need to think, you know, that we said meditate on these things. If you were God, would you not want to check the world? Or tell them that somebody is in charge? That you, to tell the kings of the, of the earth that somebody is in charge? I would want to do that. Are you following what I'm saying? And let me ask you. If you are head of your village and the people are doing nonsense, you keep quiet. You gather everybody together and say, look, I don't want to hear that again. And uh, the people will be, because of your authority, the people will be saying, king, live forever. Am I right? Uh, if anybody should speak anything against you, uh, now the, the palace guys will do what? Will deal with the person ruthlessly. That's the truth. So, God wants to check the wall. Now, uh, in continuation of what I was saying, when the persecution took place and the people went wild with the word of God, Philip went to Samaria in Acts of Apostle chapter 8. Then we have this record. Verse 4. Therefore they that we are scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them and the people. The people there, another word for the people there is the multitudes. The multitudes with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Multitudes. That is uh, what is uh, coming on. That is what God has scheduled. And that is what he has passed on to us. And that is what uh, he is uh, arranged us from our mother's womb to be the instruments of bringing this thing to pass. God is not a man. Neither is he the son of a man. This ministry is not raised for nothing. I have told you time without number, but I did not come into the church to start a church. I became from childhood at the age of nine, I told you I desired to know God. 1953. And I didn't have anybody to explain to me. And then somehow the quest died, but it didn't die completely, no. It didn't die completely. The only time that it died, I would say completely, was during the war. We were struggling to leave. But then after the war, the quest rose again. 
And then I began to look for salvation. I began to look for salvation. I went to crusade grounds. I didn't argue when people invited me to any, any meeting. I didn't need to be invited at all. And February 1975, I got what I was looking for. And I was satisfied that I had become born again. And that I was now a child of God that was on my way to heaven. The old ways of smoking cigarettes and the old ways of uh, this and that. All the nasty things were over and out. And I rejoiced in that. And I told everybody that came my way about the newfound life. Every friend of mine knew it. Every person that was above me in the old place of work knew it. And I told you that at one time I was a manager an assistant manager of the place where I worked in Lagos Pan Electric, a division of UAC of Nigeria, PLC. Now and um, I was as, as such an individual that I didn't care about anybody. If your manager will be no manager. That one is a cup of tea. If it's fight, I fight you. The only thing you can do is uh, take me from it. Take away the employment. And my philosophy was, uh, if your employment, this employment closes, another employment will come because you're not the only employer in this world. I didn't even know Christ when I had that philosophy. And this man was seeking a way to terminate my employment, but he couldn't find it. Now, but when I became born again, there was a drastic transformation. Let me, Brian, to ask you, if you say that you've been born again, where is the transformation? Where is the evidence? The people saw it. People working with me in the workshop saw it. This man saw it. And one of the days he called me into his office. He said, Aloysius, I can see this thing that is being called being born again, I can see it in you, even though I myself am not born again. I'm not the person that told him. The people in the places where I lived, that they saw it. So that's that. These days, pastors have no testimony. Pastors' wives have no testimony. People in the places are rejecting Christianity because of the lifestyle, the, the conduct they have and claim to be Christian, go to church, read Bible, sing songs, and so on and so forth. So when I came to the church, I came now just having one single eye aiming at being in heaven. I didn't want anybody to know me. Listen to me very, very, very well. In 1975, when I met a number of people at St. Teresa's Catholic Church, Marine Beach, where they were having what we call the Saturday Scripture Study Session. Now, somebody just informed me about that group of people. There were about uh, seven or less or a little more. And I rushed to the place Saturday evening and met them number of them were born again. So, and I rejoiced. And then that was where God gave us uh, the vision. And then, at that time, Deeper Life was a non-denominational ministry. And then we were on and on continuing. At one time, they invited the man of God there to come and give us a word of uh, encouragement. And then he came and use Psalm 133 to give us the word of encouragement how we must bind ourselves together and pursue the vision because it was a, a very glorious vision. It was so excited. Now, because we didn't want the people to, to, we didn't want to raise any dust, so that day we didn't hold the fellowship in the church hall because fellowship used to hold in the church hall. So we heard it in the school hall, which is in the same compound. Then after the fellowship, um, he appointed uh, five people 
to become Bible study leaders. I wasn't one of the people that was appointed, but I was uh, capable of doing that. I didn't know how he did the appointment, whether he observed the people. And uh, if he observed the people and did the appointment, he would be right because I was a quiet person sitting at the corner. I never made any noise. I never showed I knew anything. And in fact, if you watched me in the fellowship, you would think that this person does not know anything. But it is when I open my mouth, then you know that I know something. So whether it was our leader that gave him, gave him the names of the people, I don't know. And I didn't go to ask the leader. And I wasn't, I wasn't bothered. I said to myself, every person must not be a leader. There are not too many captains in the airplane. Uh, one captain and then there is a second officer. That is uh, the, the co-pilot. In case this other person will die, he will not bring down the plane or all of you are dead. Now, that's what I said to myself. And, uh, and I told the Lord, I don't need to be known by anybody. Because what is important is uh, that, that God knows you. And that's all. Some people will become offended today. Ah, a person like me, that somebody will tap to pray, to close the meeting in prayer. Now, the person that will tap me was taken, and you that have that volcanic prayer is not taken. Some people will become offended. But there was no offense because I didn't want to be known. So what am I saying? The Church of the Watchman uh, was not originated through a man that wanted uh, to be known. Uh, how many great men of God and then they count this one and count this one and count this one and count Aloysius. I don't want to be counted among the great men by, by Times Magazine. Somebody in Nigeria was told, uh, what's your testimony? He said, go and ask Times Magazine. They wrote my name. I began to wonder whether it is Times Magazine that is an angel that begins to tell us who is a man of God and who is not a man of God. This is utter foolishness, utter ignorance. Now, and uh, that was it. So the church of the watchman was born out of a concern. And now the concern grew and developed into what we are now doing. So we have, uh, I've shown you the, the, the something, the, the analysis details. Uh, we have the first aspect of uh, the project, which is raising a great army of believers for an imminent great harvest of souls. And we went on in that book that is uh, in, on, on page 13 and described uh, what uh, the various uh, aspects of various, uh, 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 various phases of uh, the, 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 the great army of believers are supposed to be, we found that we have, uh, the heart would be an army with loins guarded with the bad armor of the truth of God's word, according to what is written in Ephesians 4, 6, 14. An army wearing the breastplate of righteousness, an army with their feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And that statement can be far a phrase, an army whose feet are fitted with readiness and resolution that come from the gospel of peace. And then it is supposed to be, and it is not just supposed to be, it has to be an army wearing the shield of faith, an army wearing the helmet of salvation, and then an army wielding the sword of the spirit and the spiritual sword of the believer, which is the word of God. Army washing and praying always in the spirit with all perseverance. And then an army that with uh, harness with the fruits and gifts of the spirit for impeccable Christian life and effective service to the Lord. Now, this is what somebody who says is a worker in the watchman or a leader in the watchman, man or woman, 
must buy, must agree with, must, that is, must receive. If you don't receive it, if you have no time for it, if you don't read it, if you don't agree with it, God knows that you are not one of us and that you are not my child. This statement has been made severally. God knows it. If you don't have time for it, he knows that you are not one of us. You may feign to be one of us. You may, be, you may feign to be a member of the watchman, but by refusing to accept what God has given as uh, the blueprint, what he is wanting to achieve among the believers, beginning with the watchman, Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Or you are not believing it, accepting it, you are simply showing the Lord that you are not one of the people. You are simply showing the Lord that you are a saboteur. I know a man that was originally of the Roman Catholic institution, he and his wife. But because he was looking for a child, and the man moved away from the Roman Catholic institution and then went to the Sabbath. But when he went to the Sabbath, he saw the things that were going on in Sabbath, and uh, just because of uh, the things, uh, manifestation of this and that, now he remained there with his faith. He didn't believe the things that he was in, that they were involved in, and they used to call him a saboteur. And he told me that it is not the Sabbath that gave him child, that it is his faith. He let, eventually, when he got uh, a child, believing God, continually believing God, he moved away from the Sabbath. They used to call him saboteur. So, if you don't believe what we are saying, you are a saboteur. Can you be among the Jehovah's Witnesses and then be preaching that Christ is, uh, is God? I'm asking you. Or oh, you don't believe what they believe about Christ and you say that you are a Jehovah's Witness? You cannot say that. They will not make you a leader. They will know every, when you come around, everybody will be looking like this. The saboteur has come. So that is how you, you understand what we are saying. You have, it is a handbook that you cannot, you, you go along with it in the, with your Bible. Do you know that the Mormons don't read the Bible? Church of, the, of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. You know that there is a book of Mormons. And if you go to uh, uh, the one hotel that is owned by Mormons, the, the, it is owned by some, some wealthy men who hold on to that thing. What's the name of the hotel again? Marriott Hotel all over the world, fantastic hotel. What you see in the drawers is the Book of Mormons. You don't see Bible there. I said that Bible is a book of his own and this book of Mormon is a book of his own. They take it as their Bible. It was a revelation of the person that began it. The big and the small, the wealthy, uh, that is following it. And if you go to U.S. and you see their headquarters, I never saw any building like that. Towering high. Are you there? Are you there? Now, look at all the world and see the people that are following this and following that, this ideology and the other ideology, and they die with it. And their blood is shed and they don't care about that. Now, these people will be the judge of the people that have the truth, that are being told the truth. And they would not give themselves to that truth. So, 
enough of that he should be a humble going side by side you are reading it over and over and over again and so that you can at every point in time know what ideology that we are following and what vision is this watchman pursuing what am i involved and you must be part and parcel of it that is it and then we saw the second aspect of uh, the project a threefold end time project bringing about a great harvest of souls proper in the church which thing i have read in the places that i've read in acts of apostles we also have uh, the third aspect of the project fulfilling the pre-rapture necessity listen to me listen to me attentively fulfilling the pre-rapture necessity god works with somebody according to according to your thinking and that is according to the meditation of your heart if you have no time to meditate and to think on what you are doing on christianity on on what jesus christ did on the cross of calvary on going to heaven and then on uh, 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 putting on a celestial body where there is no sickness again where there is no sorrow again and being in the kingdom of god forever while other people are languishing eternally in the lake of fire if you don't think about it how can you appreciate it how can that be appreciation on a thing that you don't consider on a thing that you don't have time for So, if you don't have time for the things that are written, the vision, how can you be part of them that God will use to fulfill it? Why did I even make uh, this comment? When I became a Christian, I have told you what led to the things that happened. Day in, day out. I was kneeling by my bed and I was saying, but what did I do for God? But this is the experience that Jesus Christ talked about to Nicodemus. Now, but all these people that I see in this parish and all the people, I look down into the time that we were served at mass and saw the multitudes. Yesterday I rehearsed a number of things, all the rantings, all the things that we are saying in Latin. The people that were hearing us at the altar did not understand what we were saying. And then I will look back and then I will say, how can somebody even benefit from what he did not understand? You came in here. And I began to teach this thing that I'm teaching with uh, German language. And I began to speak German language. Now, let me ask you, how would you accept a few people here who come from Germany? Maybe David Ahmed and some other people. Now, let me ask you, who among you on that does not understand German language? Raise up your hand. You see, the motives of people don't understand German language. Now, but I began all the things that I'm talking about in German language and continue shouting. I'm asking you, how would you look at me? You just uh, take whatever I take your share and go away and say, I can't understand this man. Now, but that is what was happening. So I began to think about it. And then I began to look to look at the multitudes of uh, uh, young women, and then began to look at the uh, the, the ordained people and uh, whom we were living with, and I knew that they were not men of God. And I said, no, no, no. 
God has a good intention. And then I began to remember the scripture that says God will have all men to be saved and not come to the knowledge of the truth. And when I came across uh, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 4 and Ephesians chapter 5, I began to think about it. This thing that this apostle wrote, I began to ask myself, did he write his mind? But I hear that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for correction in righteousness. All scripture given by inspiration of God. So this man wasn't talking his mind. In Ephesians chapter 4, as I read, I will begin to think. Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 10. He that descended, that is into the lower parts of the earth, that is Christ, he is the same person also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. And uh, he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers the fivefold ministry for the perfecting, for what purpose of the gifts is for the perfecting of the sin, maturing the saints. For the work of the ministry, for a defying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. Oh, great Father, if uh, there are really apostles having the excellent spirit of God, not what people claim, if there are really apostles and there are really prophets having the excellent spirit of God, and we have evangelists having the excellent spirit of God. The excellent spirit of God will not accept erroneous interpretation. If the excellent spirit of God is inside you. Are you following me? He will not accept erroneous interpretation. He will kick against erroneous interpretation. The thing that is not good in the sight of God. The excellent spirit of God will not accept it. And so you see that all these people that accommodate the things that, uh, that uh, are not good in the sight of God, listen to me, they are using both their minds and the spirit of God and there is a conflict. Some of the times they have what is known as religious spirits. Foul but religious spirits. Religious spirits don't make, don't make people to fall down. Religious spirits now come and teach with eloquence, but they teach error. Are you following me? And so many people that you see, you have the, the, the excellent spirit of God that they will teach the truth. He says these uh, offices were given, uh, gifts were given until we all come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, that is, uh, that is a very, uh, 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 very deep knowledge, knowledge of the Son of God, the kind of knowledge that Jesus had toward God, the kind of knowledge that Apostle Peter had toward Jesus. That is what is being said of the knowledge of the Son of God, an awareness that is very definite. And then he says, and of the Son of God unto a perfect man, that unto a, perf a mature a, a people, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That is, the, 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 these people are ministering, ministering and ministering, ministering and ministering, until these people that they are ministering to will acquire some substantial measure of the stature of of Christ, the spiritual stature of Christ, what is known as the fullness of Christ. Because in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 16, he said, And of his fullness, his fullness of faith, his fullness of love, his fullness of humility, his fullness of dedication, his fullness of wisdom, have all we received. We have received from that fullness grace for grace, that is, item by item, faith. Awareness, wisdom, holiness, and so on and so forth. This is what the genuine servants of God. But unfortunately, there is a mixture 
mixture, complete mixture of uh, things among the people. Now, as I read this, I began to think, what did this apostle concoct this thing? Does it, is it not possible? I will check my head and I will say, it is possible. This is what it is for. It cannot be otherwise. On my knees, I will check my head. It cannot be otherwise. God is not a liar. And then I came across chapter 5 and uh, verse, uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 25. He says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify. The word sanctify means set apart, set it apart. And cleanse it, not just set it apart, but cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The word of God is uh, the, the instrument that you use as water and soap to wash and to cleanse. Remember that earlier when he was with them in John's gospel chapter 15 and verse 3, he has said, you are now cleansed, you are now clean through the word that I gave to you, which you have received. They have cleansed you of all the debris and all the natural tendencies that you came to me with. And then this man was saying, verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Now I, I will be asking myself, is this the apostle's opinion? I'm, and I'm asking you today, is it the apostle's opinion? Is this truth? That he might present it to himself, a glorious church. If something is glorious, the thing is glorious. A glorious church, not having spot, spot of sin, spots of hypocrisy, spots of pride, spots of arrogance, spots of ego, spots of uh, immorality that fill the whole world. Spots of worldliness that fill the whole places. A glorious church without, without a spot, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that you should be holy and without a blemish. My brethren, as I was, as I would think about this and I said, there is no way it cannot be. No wonder God saw my mind and then gave the vision. How can God give you vision if you, if, you, if you don't have a time for him? Um, you know, there are some people who, if they see that somebody is having the gift of revelation, and then like some individuals have, one of the people I call, then they will say, keep that your revelation. I have known somebody that said, keep that your revelation. And he was talking to Luke. Give that to your revelation. He doesn't know that some people have the gifts of uh, God showing them things from time to time and time to time. So that through those things that uh, there will be an encouragement unto people. And those things are true. Listen to me. I don't call every manner of person I see on earth and ask him to tell me what God is saying. Every person that is named a Christian, I call you on phone and tell you what God is saying to you to tell me. I must know your life. I must know your commitment. I must know your passion. I must know your testimony. Before I can say, what is God telling you to tell me? And when you tell me what God is telling you, I believe it because I know the life you are living and that God will speak to you the truth. That is it. So, that is how what we are doing was born. Now, this is a second aspect. I mean, the, the third aspect, the fulfilling of the pre rapture necessity. This is a pre rapture necessity. Jesus Christ uh, in John chapter 14 said, that I go to prepare a place for you. Let's go and read it. And when I do that, when I am done with that, I come and do what? I receive you unto myself. Verse 
1 John 14 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me my father's house and many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I'll come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also this is talking about the rapture you have known very well that the coming of Christ is in two stages. The first one is the one that comes into the air with the blast of the archangel's uh, trumpet. I have told you what that trumpet is going to do. And then the dead in Christ, their spirits will in a jiffy move from the excellent glory and then come into the places where they were buried and from their skeletons uh, celestial bodies uh, will be built in a twinkling of an eye and all those domes will open and all those people will shoot up like like a, like a sh shuttles and then the next moment they that are in the world will undergo metamorphosis which thing Enoch underwent? Which thing Elijah underwent? Metamorphosis. He entered the chariot of fire. And then in the chariot of fire as he was carrying him, that is where the metamorphosis took place. Because a flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot go with this your body into the kingdom of God. I've said it numerously. If you go with this your body into the kingdom of God. Do they eat rice and beans there? The people that are there don't carry intestine. Like you carry. Where is the way will you go to toilet? So you can see that uh, assumption, assumption theory is a fallacy. That the mother of Jesus was taken body and spirit, body and uh, soul, just as she was, and then taken to heaven. Living in what house in heaven? That is fallacy. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, this is it. Pre-rapture necessity. And then, as a third aspect, and then when we looked at that third aspect of the ministry, we broke it down to, and looked at uh, the unity of the faith of uh, the believers. We talked about having knowledge of the Son of God as we as uh, we read in Ephesians chapter 4, that is substantial measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, and then having a glory of church without spot and without wrinkle. After that, the book shows uh, the reasons uh, underlying the lost and a threefold end time project. The first reason is the time now in heaven. Remember that uh, in 1999, as I have told you, it was in Padova that, and it was a Sunday, and I was to uh, preach to a handful of people, a handful of watchman people, and some other people, a very handful of people. And then as I walked to the pulpit to deliver the message I had uh, prepared, I heard the voice of the Lord said, your message is, it is five minutes to the midnight. And I was confused. I was already on the altar when I heard it. Now it is five minutes to the midnight. And then the scripture that occurred to me immediately was uh, Matthew chapter 25 about the virgins. And then with that, immediately I delivered the message, the five minutes to the midnight. And then this uh, aspect, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, book uh, gives us details of uh, that thing that is, uh, that is uh, written there, that is uh, of the virgins and five minutes to the midnight, we use that scripture to describe everything. We talked about uh, the midnight, what it means, the climax, the zenith. 
the highest point of all the commotions, all the things that will destabilize, all the things that, that will make people to withdraw from the faith and to become lukewarm and to go into sin and to be polluted and they uh, are building and building and building and uh, it is at the height at the zenith at the apex that the midnight will occur midnight is uh, at that time that the trumpet will sound and so why should you not read it why should you not be, be, uh, be why should you not be part and parcel of you we should uh, the circumstance of the ten virgins, how five were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones did not take oil, spare oil, while they were waiting. And the oil we are talking about is the oil of faith, oil of prayerfulness, oil of humility, oil of all the qualities that we find in Christ. That is it. And there are people who have lost the oil. And then... Um, the foolish virgins uh, did not take extra oil and then their lamps went out at the midnight call. And then they ran, riot, they ran riot. And then we are looking for, give us of your oil. And the people said, no, do not give you of your Go out and buy. And while they went out to look for oil, now the bridegroom came and the doors were shut. And then it's fantastic. Uh, and it, something that is uh, written not by man. Pastor Joseph Chike told me that somebody who is not a watchman read this book. You told me and was asking, is it a man that wrote this book? That's what you told me. He's not a watchman. As he, as he read it, as he read it serially, as he read it, read it read into it he was asking who is it a man that wrote this uh, documented this but the people that uh, we are given the something don't have time for it but it is no more now did you hear what i said it is no more now that somebody should say i am a worker in the watchman walking what you are a worker and you're done you don't keep abreast. You don't know what you what the basis of you are being a worker. You don't know what you are working on. You say you are a worker. Why are you then working? What work are you doing? You don't have the blueprint. Now you say I am a supervisor of uh, the building that is going on. Now what building is going on? You say I don't know. Where are the architect's drawings? I don't have them. Where are the engineer's drawings? I don't have them. And then you say you are a supervisor. What are you supervising? How do you raise a building that you don't have the drawings about? How do you supervise it? How do you gather the workers? Something that you don't have the blueprint about. Something that you know nothing about. I've told you how that you cannot bring a mechanical engineer and put him on site and tell him to raise the size scraper of buildings. That's not mechanical engineering. The only mechanical engineering aspect of the building is maybe the lift and some of the things. But this other one is civil engineering or building technology. So in the book, the marriage supper between the bride and the bridegroom is stated what it means. That you know what? At the time that the rapture takes place, there will be the marriage supper with the Son of God, with the bridegroom. The church is the bride of Christ. There is the marriage supper. Just like you had a marriage with a lady or with a man. And then after the tying the knot, then you go and make a feast and then entertain the people. That's what happens. And Christ is going to do that with the bride in the Zohar above when they ascend up to him. And then there will be a commotion in this world because the world will, will be jolted as to what happened 
The economy will collapse. Listen to me. Catastrophic things will happen. You think it's a joke? Assuming two pilots are believers, two genuine children of God, and now they disappear from the cockpit, what will happen? The plane will plunge and all the people will die. Simple. God will not say because uh, the people will die, they will not go in the rapture. They will disappear. Who we'll stop? And then what it will do in the world, I've told you uh, before, it, it's not me that should even buy you all the book. See, the rapture, one world government, and the great tribulation, Louis Munoz is a writer. You must get it and read. He showed that all the things that are happening, they are all, they are all gathering up. And what is outstanding is the taking away of the church. So that uh, now the world will be in great need. Already the world is in great need. We are talking about uh, now um, um, what is it that they are talking about? That climate change and then the commotions. You have not seen, you have not seen tornadoes. You have not seen hurricanes. You are yet going to see hurricanes. You are going to see um, more and more earthquakes and commotions. Country against country. Syria is finished. And then uh, the Arab world. You know about the Arab Spring? Nigeria has commotions. Even in Britain, some time ago, demonstrated and broke glasses and went on the streets. Are you hearing me? In the U.S. the other day, because some people, you see what is happening. Nobody cares. You shoot them and they come out. We continue like that. And pestilences will continue. Like that. Until the, that which is hindering the Antichrist. Until that person is taken out of the way. And then the book went on to, to, to show another area of uh, the reasons underlying the project. He says, second, area, second reason is, uh, it is the day of the Lord. Praise God. It is the day of the Lord. Now, and in that se segment, we showed how that the day of the Lord usually follows the day of devils and men. And from the history, that has been so. God is not such an individual that uh, he should go and say, balance, you box me, I box you. Now, listen, if I see, if somebody sees you, lady, and then a child of seven years, a girl, you say, woman, and the person is standing side by side in front of you, one facing the other, and you say, you, I'm going to show you Pepe today. And then you, as big as you are, and then your children uh, can even have those, that kind of, some of your children have, have gotten children like that person. And then he said, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? I'm going to show you. And then you hold the woman and the girl and you are struggling. What will people say about you? They will say that you are mad. Why are you doing with this little girl? Am I right? Yeah, God does not, cannot do like that. He doesn't struggle with Satan. Allows him. You ask me. Did you not know that, uh, that uh, serpent, uh, that, that the devil entered the serpent? Did he not know? He knew. But he didn't stop it. I'm asking you, did you not know when Sarai said to Abraham, now God has restrained me from, that was her opinion. God didn't restrain her. God had given a promise. Did you hear me? That was what her own mind. Did God restrain her? Now he went to say to Abraham, no, when we went down to Egypt, we picked Hagar, we picked this maid. Now, let me be built by her. Let me have children by her. Let that be a family through her. Now, take her to be your wife. Abraham rejoiced now. <laughs> he gave a woman to a man, he rejoices. And then he did not remember what God said. And then the next moment, a child was born. 
And then, and then, even before the child was born, the woman's belly has protruded and he said, this old, old, old soldier doesn't have child. And I have child and then I'm married to this old soldier that doesn't have child. And then he looked down upon the woman. The woman now came to Abraham and said, my wrong be upon you. I don't agree. Did you hear me? I don't agree. The wrong of her shouldn't be upon Abraham. You are the person that imposed this lady on Abraham. And Abraham was even wrong himself. And then Abraham said, look, you impose the lady upon me. Is he a maid? What you like, you do. Did God see that uh, Ishmael was going to be born? Did he see that the commotion would be in the world? Through that? He see that. But he's in charge. He allow you to do what he, li he, he likes. Now, Satan did all that he did. But now he said, okay, through a woman, you have robbed these people. And through the seed of a woman, I deal with you. I make a long term pr plan. Oh, praise God. When I look at the patience of God, you cannot understand it. You cannot understand how he will wait and wait and wait. And you went, you rigmaroled. How many years did you rigmarole? How many years did you read my role before you became born again? I'm asking you. And then he waited. He knew that a time was going to come that you're going to be born again and he kept you from dying. And so, he made this long term program. And then, then undid what the enemy uh, did. It is the day of the Lord. This day is the day of the Lord. In the sense that the world has made itself uh, very ripe for God to show up. Praise God. For God to show up. Praise God. Now some people are praying. Are praying saying God. 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 Boko Haram. This and that. But remember that I have told you before. That the nozzle of the gun will turn around. The nozzle that was pointing to the east or to the west will turn around and point to the person that was pointing it. But is it happening now? When the whole thing was bomb church, kill Christians, everybody kept quiet and people liked it because it was uh, Jesus' people were being killed. Now, but now, the people are killing everybody. Are you hearing me? You said, so you like the carnage? Not that I like the carnage. But now the nozzle of the gun has turned. They are killing everybody. Bomb mosque. That's it. And everybody is shouting. The people that supported it are now shouting. Because the thing has backfired. That is God's handiwork. Did you hear me? I said that is God. God said I create peace and I create calamity. He, cre he allowed the tsunami that took place in Japan. Then you ask him, why? And I ask you, why not? Why not? If you owned this tent, and at a point in time, you got offended and set it on fire, should any person question you? Is it your tent? You do what you want to do. I do what I want to do. Yes. To we'll show you some lesson. Now he's going to show more lessons unto the people of the world. But they are not learning their lessons. Anybody with me? Yes. You can query him. You can say you are unrighteous and so what? There are people that have said that God is unrighteous. There are people that said, ah, how can you be talking about God? And he allowed all these people, all these children to be dying in Africa and then the commotion, no food and war ravaging this and that. Nonsense, junk. All those children died. Dying does not make any meaning. As the children die, they go to heaven, go to a better place. And you that don't know about heaven, you are talking, about, talking rubbish against God. So, in the book, the man showed that he is in charge. And he is, uh, 
he is a person that allow them do what you want to do and with all that we are doing at that appropriate time i do what i want to do remember that some time ago we we had the message that the people did as they pleased and god did as he pleased that is it so now it is the day of the lord and then we went on and on and showed um how that uh, the methodology the 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 modus operandi of uh, now raising this army of uh, believers that will bring about a great harvest of souls and then we talked about uh, in our know, raising men of god men and women of god men and women of valor so if you read down you see how it was stated and that was the reason for the IGMC the IGMC has not ended we are just waiting for the rock chapel you can see the work that is going on and let me digress and talk to you we are in, in lack of funds but you see that the the thing is going up gradually the roofing sheets alone i wanted to buy copper roofing sheets that will have cost us about 120 million or 150 million but then on a the second third we don't have money and then we bought the insulated ones which has already arrived in six or eight con six containers that are there and then by the time we finish it and then the the floor is marbled or whatever kind of something and then the windows are there and everything is there IGMC begins again. As it, IGMC begins again because that is the instrument that God wants to use to raise a great army of believers from among the denominations. And I want to inform you that there are people that are not watchmen that have the vision of the IGMC at the fingertips more than watchmen. Right or wrong? and they are clamoring for it they are saying where is the man of god where is the international gospel ministers conference of the hour i am sure of what the demand is in nigeria don't know about some other places but i know about nigeria they are waiting there are people that are tired there are people that know that a big name serve have strayed there are people that know that churches do you know churches that we are we are we are the places of places where you could get and get fire that they are now in court did you hear me i'm making a mess of jesus christ they are now in court suing themselves and then the people that heard to the truth are now saying don't forget about that don't uh, talk about uh, uh, christian dress anymore go and make up yourself unless you want to have empty benches and then in such in such churches there is now a commotion there is a faction some people are saying we still hold the old something the other people are saying we hold the modern something they have turned themselves into another thing the thing they believe before they don't believe they have gone back to their vomit what has happened the old part has been forsaken shouldn't god show up shouldn't he rebuild the church but do you know that in the midst of the people there are people that are crying do you know that there are pastors even junior pastors and some people that are crying that are saying this is not what we receive we must return to it better am i right yes, and now those people are there and it is with them that god will do these things as they continue to come and then on and on until until through them as uh, able ministers of the new testament and, and uh, men and women of valor these christian assemblies will rise up and then through them god's exploits be done and as you go through the book it shows you the ultimate that is a long time long time result and then the interim result interim result is uh, arriving jerusalem 
Oh, praise God. Now, if you read the book, you will know that it was not written by the thinking of man arriving in Jerusalem. Praise God. And then now, uh, Jerusalem, physical Jerusalem was used to illustrate the meaning of arriving in Jerusalem. Shouldn't it be a book, a handbook that you are reading and eating until it becomes part and parcel of you? And if you do, listen to me, if you sell yourself onto this vision, you guarantee long life. You guarantee everything. Now, praise God. Now, you think I am joking. You think I am joking. Nothing else could have kept me alive other than the vision that I have. Nothing else. I said what? Nothing else. It is this vision that has kept me alive. That has made all the arrows not to pierce through and bring down the man. No more, no less. No more, no less. Somebody was called when I was minister and said, you will rejoice. Listen to me. God is not a man. Neither the son of a man. He doesn't lie. I'm not, I didn't tell the person my mind. Now, if you go to this Bible that I bought in India, there is a lot of markings of what God showed me through these three months of turmoil. That is putting these scriptures there, this one, that one, that one, plus the ones that have been quoted before. And I will bring into that for which I have called you, and that will have made. The man was great and went forward and grew until the man became very great. Now say the Lord have formed him from the womb to be a servant. Bring Jacob again to him. And all that. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And that has borne what has been happening. Praise God. That is what has kept the person alive because I cling to it. You know my prayer? Listen to me. My prayer and the desire of my heart is very, very definite before the Lord. And I tell him, listen to me, Lord, I am not looking for house in Dubai. I am not looking for anything. I am looking for something. I am looking for God checking the world. I tell him, I am looking for a time when I will go to the village and then people will see me and when they see me, they will run into the bush. Like the masquerade. If you meet masquerade in my place. And then it does like this. Listen to me. You will jump away from your bicycle. And uh, land in the bush. Because the bube. Because the, the glory. The thing is inside. When it does like this. And you are obodu. You are not. You, 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 you are not. Uh, you are not adoku. Then you will. In fact. You will faint as you are running. I want to be a masquerade. That is when they see me, they say, This man is he a human being. And as I'm coming, the some of people are running. Other people are saying, Come and teach us the way of your God. Now, that kind of mind, so it's not good. That is my desire. So that people will say, we see that God is alive. We see that there is a God you are following. Come and show us the way of your God. That's, that's my passion. I said that is what? My passion. They in the earth. I have no other thing that thrills me. No other thing thrills me. You have first class? Good. Your degree, good. But this is what treats me. But when, listen to me. As I enter the plane, I don't care who is sitting by. As the plane lands, I raise my hand. Oh, praise God. Some people will do as if they are the people that landed the plane. They keep quiet and they relax. 
But a plan could land and break into three pieces. That is the time we say, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Then they begin to call Jesus they do not know. Are you following? Yes, and I read my Bible. And I read the Bible and when I get tired, I sleep. I wake up and read the Bible again. One of our pastors went to um, uh, one of the uh, um, uh, Bene Republic where they went and then he was reading his Bible he told me one of our pastors is here. I was reading his Bible and reading and reading and reading and reading and one white man that came to that place in Porto Novo now who was in one of the one of the rooms saw him reading Bible from morning to night and then got offended at point in time and went to the pastor and said what is in this book that you are reading? What is in this book that you are reading from morning to night? What is in this book? And the pastor turned to him and said, when you read this book, you will know what is inside it. You are angry. You are reading your novel. I'm not angry. And you are angry that I'm reading Bible. I will bring the Bible. I will bring the big one. So that you become more angry. Are you following me? There are people who are following Satan. And they declare it. They are following Satan. I have seen young men at Johannesburg International Airport and they arrived from the plane and we were going through immigration and they were wearing vests and at the back of the vest clearly written Satan's angels. Did you hear what I said? I said written word boldly Satan's angels. And they were going. Why shouldn't I be Jesus angel? So if you if you put yourself in this thing, it guarantees you what you are looking for. So now I've almost I've gone, almost gone through it. Who is on the side of the threefold end time project then? You will read it over and over again so that it will be part and parcel of you so that you know what you are doing so that if you are there and you are singing then you should know the kind of song that you should sing that we yield revival in the lives of men or just committing sin and coming here to sing and polluting the sanctuary and not having the Holy Spirit and you are singing, singing what? Every chorister should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Simple and short. So the people that are leading them, you should know that. And uh, Paul is the pastor that is not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Paul is the woman leader that is not baptized with the Holy Ghost. He doesn't have life. Paul is the person that wants to give life that he doesn't possess. So, as all the people that are doing one thing or the other, you need to know why you are doing what you are doing, what you are facilitating, what you are facilitating. Every aspect of the work is necessary. Those that are building, their aspect of the work is as necessary as those that are pastoring. There are people that are making great mistakes in their lives. Because they want to be called a pastor and so what. Pastor and so what. Reverend and so what. Listen to me. The people that are cooking in the kitchen that wake up earlier than you and then they are by the fire, the heat of the fire and the smoke, they are inhaling it. And the people that are washing the toilets, listen to me, they get greater reward than the pastor's reward. If you don't know. So go and do your work and forget about being pastor. Who will, who will, who will arrange this? Thing? Who will document the something? Who will send it into the internet if all of us are pastors? So, now there you are. I read you some more scriptures on the vision. Everything, when you join everything together, they agree together. They agree together in in Isaiah chapter 49, 5 and 6, agrees together with the threefold end time project. That is uh, 
very true. There are 49, 5, and 6. Hallelujah. I was given while I was returning from this playground. After, hallelujah, after this on the hill. You know what? God is alive and every person will be judged according to his works and everybody will be rewarded according to his works. We say on the hill, I just heard the voice of the Lord saying, raise 14,000 men and women and let them go to Mbise and let the people that are working take casual leave and people that are trading close their shops. And who is the person that will play it down? Was it not what was announced? And now, not less than 12,000 people were raised. In the day when the people were saying, Who would believe that in that particular assembly, uh, people want to scatter it and say you are a church? Did I scatter Otun's uh, church at St. Teresa's Marine Beach? If you steal from a man that hates stealing, that stole from no man, your sin becomes double. You go to a man that is a man of peace throughout. Brothers know it. All my leaders of throughout these 40 years did not give anybody any headache. Those of you that have caused me headache, you need to repent. In dust and ashes. I did not cause any person headache. Not one leader. Till today they are my friends. Listen to me. One of my friends. He was born again. Three months before me. And, and uh, I learned much from his faith. And then. The other day. He lost his wife. And I came from Lagos. And went to the barrier. And then. The other day while I was in India. I called him. I saw. He. Uh, I, I, his. I, I, he came onto my mind and I, I called Lagos and to ask her somebody to get somebody to get his phone. He has been in South Africa. Has he returned? Has he remarried? And then they brought me his number. I called him. And when I called him, he shouted. He said, where are you? And I said, where I am? He said, all is well. I said, all is well. He said, you have met my day today. Oh, when you come back, we must arrange to see you are for you, for you is commotion. You cause commotion, strife in church, and people will hurt one another. And the person says that he's running church. It's not this kind of church. We don't do it here and get away with it at all. You can't get away with it. Now say the Lord that formed me from the womb to be a servant. And then we went to him be said, and then on, on as a single man, and then the deed was done. Was the deed done? Yes, sir. The deed was what? Done and sealed. Nobody queried it. And the deed was done. And then as we are coming back from it, I heard the voice of the Lord clearly. Isaiah 49, 5 and 6. Isaiah 49, 5 and 6. At least two times. I think up to three times, but I'm sure of two times. Clear. Isaiah 49, 5 and 6. I didn't know what was contained there. And I opened. And we read. And now say the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant for the purpose of doing what? 
Bringing Jacob again to him. Bringing Jacob again to him. Bringing Jacob again to him. Jacob is the church. Bring it to him. Which means that Jacob strayed. God knows that Jacob has strayed. God knows that there is a lot of abomination in the midst of Jacob. God knows that uh, some pastors are using talisman. Imagine such a thing. Imagine such a thing in the house of God. Calling Jesus, carrying Bible, but some other thing is underneath. Some other people that were not born again got the spirit of divination and their people are following. Now take note of the, the thing that I said is developing here and there. And somebody is saying, and uh, I am a gay, and a gay church. And then do you know about a same-sex same marriage? Such an abomination is being they are wedded in churches and ministers, as it were, invited commas. Now wed them man to man. Man to man. In my own dialect, my people are asking, what create The meaning is that um uh, 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 a house, a uh, mud house that is uh, is uh, strong and and uh, and is so dilapidated can it manure the other another hot mud house that like it can man, can man manure man but now man must manure man in the present day what an abomination woman must manure woman what an abomination in the sanctuary and then they, they have church. And they are arguing. And places are approving it. Huh? And nations are approving it. And they want to push it over to everybody. And now people are following money. Want to get. Somebody says, Jacob has tried. I have raised you from your mother's womb. I have raised you from your mother's womb. Listen to me. Don't credit it to me alone. A tree cannot make a forest. Unless you refuse to be my child. What belongs to a father belongs to the children. Right or wrong? If you are my spiritual child, this thing is written concerning you. I tell my biological children and I told them recently I used to tell them time and again what belongs to the father belongs to you. You cannot be a stranger to this ministry. You cannot. There is no option. Because what belongs to me belongs to you because I am your father. And Isaac owned what belonged to Abraham. Can we look at scriptures on that? In John's Gospel, before I come back to where we are, John's Gospel, chapter 16, we are reading verse 13. Are you there? How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, for he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, that is, he shall receive of what belongs to me, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father had are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Son said, what the Father has belongs to me. And I want to tell you that what the father has belongs automatically to the children. Am I right or wrong? Can you cast your mind back on to the prodigal son when he returned? In Luke chapter 15. And then when he returned from waywardness. Now he has squandered his father's something. He said I am of age. I want to live my own life. And now... And then he went and wasted and then spoiled himself and came to his senses and came back and the father began to make merriment because he was dead and is now alive. And the one that was loyal all the while became angry and said, Father, 
All this while, I've been serving you loyally. I've not offended. I've been your loyal son. I've been an obedient son. You have not given me a kid. And the man said, but you are ignorant. Very ignorant. All that I have belong to you. All that I have belong to you, the loyal person. He should have known it. So we are receiving this one that's straight. Jesus said it here. And I used to tell my children all that I have and I will ask them. When you want to enter this house, do you ask for permission where I'm living? As you want to, when I went away and I'm using the car in the house, did you ask me for permission? You go to the fridge and take and take uh, um, and take the water there and go to the kitchen and cook the food there. Did you buy food here? You ask me for permission? So as it is uh, to the spirit to the physical father son. So it is to the spiritual father son. Does anybody agree? What belongs to me belongs to my uh, children. If they are. He said. Now said the Lord that formed me and you from the womb. To be his servant. Know it today. If you expunge yourself from being his servant. What you see you take. If you scheme, whatever you want to scheme for yourself, and you program yourself out of his will, what you see in the matter you take. You program yourself out of God's will for your life. What you see you take. You will not blame me. He has, he, it's not an accident that you belong to this movement. God knows that you will belong here. And God knows that there that, is going to be some kind of commotion. He knows that, TBS, listen to me in the recent past, he told me that some, he mentioned some people that are coming back to me. One of the people that left, you know, he wrote me a mess recently. And I was so excited with the mail. And he said, Daddy, I... I've uh, spoken to some of our elders. I want to hear your voice. And then, and, then, uh, and then he said something that happened to him. I want to hear your voice. I am your child. Still, I'm your child in exile. And I called some of the elders to ask, ask this person, did this person talk to you? He said no. I called another person. Did this person, he said yes, I'm sorry. I wrote him back a mail and commiserated with him on the thing that happened and then told him that I'm not home. When I come home, we can arrange that. He recognizes that he's my child in exile. A child in exile is coming back. And that is fantastic. Uh, did you hear what I said? I said that is what? Fantastic. And you should know that you made a mistake. Now those that want to be on their own, you know, and leave the place where God has uh, planned that it should be. If you, if God designs that you should live in our nature, and then you go to live in a nugu, what you see in a nugu you take. You will not believe, you will not blame anybody. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Did you hear me? If God wills that you don't step out of Nigeria and then you want to go and live in China, what you see in China you take. If you go to jail, good luck. So, now say the Lord that formed thee from the womb to be a servant. Bring Jacob again to him because Jacob has strayed and we see the strain. Though Israel, the same Jacob, not gathered yet, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength as I go about it. And then he said, Is it a small thing, a light thing, that thou shouldest be my servant? Raise up the tribes of Jacob, raise them up. 
raise them up because they are on their knees they are fallen and to restore restoration means the things that have been taken away are built back listen to me i am not a joker i look at things very very critically i am a meticulous person from childhood and the meticulousness of childhood i carry it to what i am doing did you hear me that is i go meticulously if i am building this thing i will build it listen to me somebody came to me was introduced to me and he came and then said ah my my I'm, i'm a master furniture maker listen to me and i don't doubt him he showed me where he walked and then i said okay come here and then let them give you some work to do and he came here and they gave him some work to do some some sofa to do now and then they, i came here and then they went and then unveiled the sofa and showed me the something and then i looked at the sewing the thread line and the thread line was not straight The thread line was going zigzag around the edges of the sofa. And then I said, "My friend, you wait." And then I went to the house and brought one from China. And then I brought a sample of sofa. And then I said, "Can you see the thread lines of this? Now compare it with the thread line." I don't accept your thread line. As it You must do it like this. The person that did it is not an angel. It's a human being. In fact, he doesn't go to church. So, that is what we carry into the ministry. Is it a small thing that I should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel? I believe it wholeheartedly i will also give you for a light to the gentiles look men some of you were there at gagada when the man of god allowed me to use the the one segment there on saturdays or sunday to 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 groom the people some of you were there and i remember that one of the days we were only about 13 or less than 13 and i was telling you that what i see and the thing that i am proposing will rock the world joseph you were there i saw it i saw it and i announced it you didn't understand it But I understood it and I knew it would be and it surely will be can God tell a lie I am asking you can God tell a lie do you read scriptures how many years went between the prophecy of Isaiah to Ahaz and God shall give you a sign a virgin shall be with child From that time of that prophecy to a time a virgin was with child how many years went How many years went when God said to Abraham be not I am your shield and exceeding great reward what will thou give to me seeing that I don't have a child a lease of this Damascus is my heir he said no your heir shall not be be somebody from your loins and then he said what sign take me an heifer take me a, a, a he goat and now he saw the signs that he saw and then a thick darkness came upon the on, upon him as he, as he slept and then he said they i see they shall be in a stranger in a land and they shall uh, now incarcerate them and they shall punish them for 100 years and after those years i will bring them back listen to me 430 years after God is patient 
400 and what? 30 years after. Now Moses now came to of age. And then he said, it is time for me to fulfill what I promised Abraham, your forefather. I said, don't know Abraham, but I made Abraham a promise. Now go tell these people, it is time to go. Praise God. How many years did he, did he take? Has he taken? And Enoch prophesied and said he's coming with 10,000 of his saints. By the time he comes in the, in the second coming proper, and then the time that, that prophecy of Enoch, which was revealed in, in the book of Jude or so. Now, are you, how many years will have gone? It doesn't matter the number of years. It can be one million years, but God's word has gone, and that is the bottom line. That is the final. It has gone out and it cannot be retrieved. Are you following me? He said to Jeremiah, my word has gone out. What did you see? I see that the rod of an almond tree. He said, you see right. I will hasten my word to perform it. I wash over it to perform it. As the rain comes from heaven and does not return until it has watered the earth. So my word comes and then it does not return to me void until it accomplishes that. So the word has been given. The watchman has been elected. Praise God. And now to return Jacob. Now who is on the side of this vision? Among you. Who is on the side of this vision? Who is saying look. Can there be anything better to believe? Can there be any program better to pursue? Any better program to pursue? Let me ask you, what, pro pro what program do you want to pursue that is better than this? Every program that you pursue will end on earth and yield you nothing except the things they yield you on earth. House and dress and food and car. But at the end of the day, all those things will be left here. This is the program that will grant you a crown in eternity. This is the program that will even commend you unto God. This is the program that will even guarantee what you are looking for. This is the program that will keep you from cancer. This is the program. This is a program. Between the time them I, I said that time and the time that this thing, God said that there is no way this body can develop a cancer. He said, your kidney is intact. You have no diabetes. Your heart is intact. Your pancreas is intact. Every organ is working. I hear it clearly. And then they went to inspect. No sugar in the blood. What are you talking about? Some person went to the ophthalmologist. And then they viewed with this instrument. Viewed with this instrument. Viewed with this instrument. Viewed with this instrument. And then the, the, the elderly doctor, ophthalmologist called the young person. And then come and see. And they saw all that. He said there is a, a lateral cataract. You know. You know. But I'm, you know you come for surgery. I know that he's looking for money. I say, this my eye doesn't, there is no cataract there. Even if there is cataract there, it will not develop. Listen to me. I read this Bible without glass. It is just that I want a, a free reading. Otherwise, I'll be reading my Bible without glass. Cataract, glaucoma. Now, if I go blind, I will not be able to read the Bible again. My friends, <laughs> this is what guarantees you. And it, it is dependent. The extent you get from it is commensurate to the extent of the receiving of it. The extent of benefit you get from the Lord on this matter is proportional to the extent of reception of what he said. That is it. Praise God. There are people that are undiable until the vision is achieved. 
until it's accomplished and everyone is required all the women have ministries discover your ministry don't uh, stay there there are people who like uh, to be called leader but they know that they don't have any quality and this is offensive this is offensive are you an inspirator or what what are you in the place where you are women leaders what are you that's the question i'm asking what are you think about it you know if uh, if, if i can tell you the problem the greatest part of the greatest problem of a man is that you are not able to discover your error you are not able to discover that you have error and you don't ask the lord and you don't listen there are those who are asking the lord what error do i have what error do i have and the pastor is preaching and telling you the error you have and you go back and asking the lord what error do i have what error do you have the lord will back you back out because the pastor told you your error i have I not closed my mouth in showing standard christian life standard christian life standard christian life standard christian life no boosting no saying i am better than this person i should be a dysan pastor this dysan pastor does not know much doesn't know as i know no envy like the jews were envious of jesus and then they opposed him not because he wasn't speaking the truth they were envious i know a young man but uh, you invite him to igmc and he will not come and will tell stories and then uh, sometimes somebody met me and say his problem is envy somebody very close to him told me his problem is envy that's why he doesn't come and I see, his problem is envy. How could it be that I lost you? I became born again before him. That he's doing these things. Is it me that he's doing it? Is it of him that run it or of him that will it? Is it of God that showed mercy? God chose Moses. He didn't choose the person that was eloquent. And Miriam was very reasonable. Listen to me. Miriam was that girl that was standing by when Moses was in the basket. Did you hear me? But God chose who? Moses. Because there was something, so there was a mindset that Moses had. And that is what makes God choose you. So then, having showed all these things who today is saying i am on the side of the vision of the watchman on the vision that god has given i identify with it wherever i go i think on it i will read this book i will eat it i i i give my my life toward it i will think about it i will seek to progress it and I will sponsor it and I will progress it and I will, I will support everything that needs, uh, uh, support the leader. I, will, I am a child of this man. Listen to me. I am a child of this man, a spiritual child of this man. All such people are lucky people. That's it. That's where I want to stop. Walker. Every category of person. The people that are cleaning. That's why I pity people. That discourage people. I told you how people will talk and discourage people how somebody will tell somebody you want hunger to kill you don't respond to working in the ministry and that person is dying of hunger the person that said it today is dying of hunger why the person he said it to is now living 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 fine 
and drove, drove himself out of the ministry. You see somebody that is running with the ministry, you are saying, see, see, it's your father's work. And you are making caricature of the person, you are discouraging the person. You are looking for your belly. Some people here, when some, somebody came here and was doing land business and was buying land, and many people bought land, people here, that's good here. But I don't have a piece of land here. And B doesn't have a, an inch of land here. And now, you know what? When we planned to go to Nkwesi for the university, and then we met the associate professor who is now the village uh, uh, the traditional head. He came here to see me at the end of the day. He knelt down for me to pray for him. And then was delighted that we want to come to their town. And they uh, were said to give us a massive uh, place at Inquest. Do you know what I had? Immediately some people had it. Some watchman people. They went there at Inquest and bought lands waiting for us so that when we come they will sell the lands. And now, but in the process, you know what happened? God now told me that there is no need going to question that we should be here because we have already made the foundation here. When now the surveyor told me about that, I said, then tom those people. Let them go and sell land to Nkwesi people. They wasted their money. You will, immediately you go and wait for me to make merchandise of me. You are in church. Ntong. That is piteous. Piteous. If you are there, sell the land to inquisit people. You are waiting for me. You went to buy. So that when I come, you, you know, you raise the price. I war for you. Now war for you. God knows all such people. One word that we get out of the whole thing that we are doing. But you see, listen to me. I'm doing fish farming. And uh, listen to me. Ask the people that are involved. Ask Kennedy them. I told them even though I spent personal money. But look, let the money come. I'm looking for money badly. I am looking for not million. I am looking for billions. Did you hear me? And God told me do anything that is legitimate because the program is the project is capital intensive. Now and I get the money I do what? You know what I do? I use it and use the money and put in the lock chapel. Use the money. Listen to me as I was in India. Something occurred to me. And I told my wife, I said, okay, there's something that is occurring to me, which I have vowed to the Lord. I said, there is some money that some people gave to me. And then I said, when I come back to Lagos, I will bring out $2,000. And now, now that dollar, now, now, now that dollar uh, has risen, $2,000 will give me uh, 500 or something thousand naira. And I will look for needy people and I will distribute it to them. And then I said again to myself, when I come back, I will look for money and then invest it in the rock chapel, even if it is a one million naira. What am I doing with the money? I dash my money, I give it to people. What am I doing with it? Money is to be used. If you don't use the money to the benefit of somebody, that money is your God and will condemn you to hell. Simple and short. He said, use those things. Don't we read the Bible? Don't we read the Bible? He said, use the mammon of, the, of this world. Use it to make friends. Use it to make friends of angels. So that when you, are, when you pack up, when you fail, do you know that every person will fail? If Jesus tarries, we will just fail. That is that. Peme. Otiku. Every person will. Peme. 
na when you come now they will receive you into everlasting habitation because of what you use your money to do make friends use the money appropriately yes bring the money for the rock shepherd bring the money for the roads bring the money for the thing that we are doing bring the money on hold it on hold it bring the money and that is what you show that uh, you love the lord some people love the lord but not that their pockets don't love the lord they say i love the lord i love the lord i love the lord i love the lord and then but when you say bring money they say chey it's not like that now is it up to that point you love the lord their yeah, love is uh, not true praise god i shouldn't even praise god because that's not a good idea so then i've exhausted the whole thing who is on the side of the of the vision our uh, lord shoes is that's what i'm living for what else if time permits me i will tell you my story how that i was preserved and then saved to sir i will just tell you my story and then you may be able to piece it together and see your own story preserved them and saved in order to serve him preserved from calamities how god used illness that developed in me in 1961 pile to save me from going to the army and dying can i tell you that that piece <laughs> do you want me to tell you that piece in 1961 i developed pile and then i showed my uncle my uncle didn't know what to do and then 1962 1963 1964 i went to government technical college and the team began to develop and began to protrude and in 1965 i went to the hospital this uh, general hospital that transformed into UNTH and i remember dr erushalo champion of surgery inspected it with the medical students and said my friend is not yet ripe for for surgery and then began to give me anosol suppositories to, to 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 reduce the pain if it should push out and then the thing i was uh, struggling with it oh my god in heaven if he pushes out he will be as good as dead and then i became born again 1965 the thing blew 1975 became born again and the thing was still there But then during the war he saved me. Praise God. If God had healed me at the hand of Pharaoh, shall I would have gone to the war and then maybe I may have been made there. So we were in the militia at the, the, the Dennis Memorial Grammar School. And then they came and said they are now enlisting those that went to technical school into the army engineers and then we were all enlisted. And then we went to Paul Gear Secondary School the training camp. And then there something happened. I traveled home and came back and the next batch of people I was in that batch to go to medical examination. And then as I came back they said Aloysius your batch is going tomorrow. You among the people the first batch has gone. And then I was looking at myself. I said these people will discover the pile. And they will not allow somebody that has pile to enter the army. What then am I doing here? I shouldn't be here. I packed my bag and baggage and went home. God used pile to save me. Do you know another thing that happened? One of the days I was going to Hala and then the conscripts rounded us up. 
from and every young man they saw on the road, all of you inside the vehicle, boah. And then they landed us at the Air Force Base. In my home there, the gas school, conscription. You must go to the army, either Air Force or Army by force. And then as we reached there, in fact, before we before they herded us into the vehicle, they were kicking. Kicking us. And then as the, the, uh, the, the boot man, the soldier was kicking everybody. And then I said, excuse me. And he said, yes. I said, I have piled. He said, okay. He didn't kick me again. Then we landed here. And then, you know what I did? I requested to see the officer in charge. And somebody said, you want to see the officer? I said, I want to see the officer. He said, okay, that is his place. I went there and knocked at the door. And then the man said, yes. I came in and I said, excuse me, sir. I have pie. I said, the man said, go home to your house. Praise God. That's how God used pie. Which I wanted him to take away. To save me from going to the army. And if I had gone, <laughs> I would be no watchman. <laughs> the Lord is him remiose. So he preserved me. I told you I plunged into the river that has, that has a swiftness. And I didn't know it was deep, headlong, to catch the gravel. And then I didn't know the mechanisms. And I couldn't come out. And I was suffocating. I was drinking water already was to die until I hit the, the air by struggling. And he preserved me. And then later on, many years after, he saved me. So he don't want me to serve him. For you, he preserved you. And then you said that you are saved in order to serve yourself. For me, he preserved me and saved me to serve him and to live with him eternally who is on the side of the vision all of you please stand up and look to me let me tell you another story and don't let this story or this man that I'm going to describe be a judge let him not be a judge Take note of what you are hearing. Examine yourself. I've told you the story before. I tell you again. A number of years ago, 20, 15 years ago or so, 20 years ago, I was driving from Calabar down to Lagos all alone in my Passat car. And uh, I was on the E2, we call it Bene Highway. And then at a point, I saw a local market and pulled up, entered the market, bought a ripe plantain, put into my boots, and then drove off. Soon after leaving that place, on that road, before me, I saw a man standing by the roadside. He was not well dressed. I knew that he was wanting to board one of the local vehicles. He just came from the farm. But something told me to stop and carry him. And that was the time of armed robbers, when armed robbery began. So I pulled up by the man. And I told him to enter the vehicle. And he entered the vehicle. And then I, where are you going? He said, I'm going to the next village. Then I was thinking in my mind, why did I carry this man? I do not know this man. Then I asked the man a question. Do you go to church? He said, I am a Jehovah's witness. I said, what? I'm a Jehovah's witness. 
Did you go to school? This man hardly, barely went to primary school. Then I said, why do you like the congregation? He said, I like the congregation because they teach you something and you understand it and they teach, uh, taught me, I understand it. What did they teach you? And then I didn't allow him to answer. I said, did they, what did they tell you about the spirit of man? Does man have a spirit? Is anybody listening to me? The man said, nothing like spirit of man. Then the man threw a question at me and said, if you deflate a tube, where does the air go? I said the air disappears into the air. He said that is how it is. And, and was so assured. Then I said to him, now have you not heard that the first matter, Stephen, why they were stoning him to death, he knelt down and said, while we were discussing our driving, he knelt down and said, Father, let not this sin to their charge. Jesus, receive my spirit. If there is nothing that should be received, why should somebody feed with the Holy Ghost make that kind of prayer? He didn't have an answer. I said, again, why did Jesus Christ, when he was about to die in the cross of Calvary, I was here driving. And then he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. If there is nothing that is going to go out, why did he say that? He kept quiet. And then I said, what about the apostle that said, my, the time of my departure is at hand. If there is nothing that is going somewhere, if a plane departs a location, it arrives another location. So if you use the word departure, it means that he's going somewhere. The man didn't have an answer. Then I said to him, I, can now, I now know why I gave you this right. It is that you may hear this truth and come out from there. And before we finished, he has reached the village and I pulled up and he went out. The man heard tenaciously. In the street of Padova, I met them again a number of years ago and I confronted them and the young person that was talking with him, I posed these questions and he couldn't answer. He went to bring their Oga Patapada that was in charge of the evangelism exercise and I posed the questions and the man said, my friend, what we believe is what we believe. No more, no less. And that was the end of the discussion. Now, there shall be the judge of many people that hear truth and reject it. They get Aaron, they stand by it. And somebody hears truth and throws it away. Instead of saying, Lord, Lord, thank you for the privilege of hearing truth. I get myself engrossed in this truth. I will run with it. Look at the people that want to have a marriage seven virgins in paradise. And committing heinous crimes. And they believe in what they are doing. And get the women and mess them up. And believe in what they are doing. And run with it. And Christian people are looking for their are compromising their, their so-called ministers and elders are looking for convenience and looking for money. These people are their judges. They are not on their way to heaven. Take your time. You have heard the truth about the watchman. The 
who is on the side of the Lord, given the circumstance of the day, and who is on the side of the vision. It is time to pray. It is time for decision. It is not a time of uh, speaking in tongues. You can speak in tongues in prayer to help yourself and to develop faith. But it is a time to say, I receive the truth. No more, no less. I go with it. This is what I have been safeguarded to prosecute. Um, my hand is on the deck. Close your eyes and pray. Oh, we have a project which cannot be abandoned. We have a divine project which cannot be abandoned. We are a project of the Lord. We cannot abandon it until we finish it by His grace. We cannot abandon it. We have a divine project which cannot be abandoned. We have a divine project which cannot be abandoned. I have a project of the Lord which cannot abandon it until we finish it by His grace. We cannot abandon it. We have a divine project which cannot be abandoned. We have a divine project we cannot be abandoned. We have a project of the Lord. We cannot abandon it until we finish it by His grace. We cannot abandon it. We have a divine project. Think about it. We cannot abandon it. Yes. We have a divine project. Yes. We cannot abandon it. Oh, yes. We have a project of the Lord. Yes. We will not abandon it until we finish it by His grace. We will not abandon once more. We have a divine project. We have a divine project. We will not abandon it. We have a divine project. I will not abandon it. We have a project of the Lord. We cannot abandon it until we finish it by His grace. We cannot abandon it. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and heart wide. And identify with what you should identify with. That God may preserve you from the onslaught of the enemy. At the age of 50, at the age of 60, at the age of 70, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? At the age of 20 or 21, time is flying. How time flies. What do you want to do with the rest of your life, young man? Young woman, what do you want to do? What do you want to be known for? What else will I do? What nobler course should I follow? Listen to me. Before you conclude their prayer, listen to me. Before you conclude their prayer, listen attentively to me and let's draw from this man. This young man called David. He came from the field. His mission to the battlefront was to take some, something to his senior brothers that were in the army. And when he came, the champion Goliath arose. And then he was offended when he heard the boasting. And his heart was lifted up and the spirit of God put 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 uh, put such great 
such great strength inside him and such great courage and he remembered how he fought the lion and the bear and then he said what a thing what a thing I am seeing what a deriding of the armies of the Lord what will happen to the person that will kill this man and his senior brother came and said I know the naughtiness of your life and David now asks, is that not a cause? Is that no reason I should be asking this question? Is that not something at stake? Somebody should be a David today and saying, is that not a cause? Is that no reason we should raise a rapturable church? Is Jesus not coming? The angels told the apostles that they gaze into the sky. This same Jesus will come again. Is that not a cause? Is that not a dilapidation? That's what you should ask to your, your heart. Who is wanting not to accept it? Is that not a dilapidation? Is that not a need on ground? If anybody is saying, why are you pursuing this thing? You ask the person, is that not a cause? Is that not a need? Is that not a need on ground? All of us are witnesses of the, deca the decadence, the dilapidation. Is that not a cause? Be the David of the day. Be the champion that killed the so called champion. Is anybody accepting it? Is anybody saying there is a cause? There is a reason. There is a sufficient reason why I should follow. Why I should engage. Why I should not be a passive person. Why I should not be a bystander. Why I should not be an onlooker. Why I should, why I should not still sit on the fence. Why should I, I should not be a that, that stand by the sidelines. Why I should be totally involved. Involved every withhold. Involved every withhold. Develop every talent that is in me in order to pursue this thing. God gave me the talents. God gave me the money. God gave me the education. God gave me the brain. God gave me the faith. God gave me the height. God gave me everything. And then uh, my life is running. I am 25 years old. But before you blink your eye and now open it and close it, uh, another 25 years is with you. Do you know that the 70th year took me by surprise? Do you know that I was saying, Sir, Lord Jesus, 70 years. And this thing is like this. I didn't know when it came. I didn't know how it came. How time flies. How time flies. You are 25 and you think that 25 years will not come quickly. 2014 is come and gone. But we started it the other day. Now 2015, I mean, and now 2016 has come in. And now January is passing. And then February. And the next time, you are adding another year. You are now 69. What will you do? You are 30. You are, you are, you are only bothered about marriage. My friend, you get married. The next moment, you, you clock 10 years after marriage, you are now 50. And then you are sagging. At 50, you begin to sag. What are you going to do? Is that not a cause? Is that not a reason? Sufficient reason for that matter? Can't you see how men are marrying men in church and women are marrying women? How pastors are making people to eat grass and say they have the power of God? You can't see it. And the people are remaining there. You can't see it. They hold the error. And they hold it tenaciously and go go headlong into it. What else will I say? I am for this project. Who is on the side of this project? Who is on the side of the Lord? And who is on the side of this project? Let a person begin to declare it. And then tell everything that is standing in your way. Tell everything to get away. Reject everything that is standing in your way. Nothing can be better. 
I said nothing can be better. The world is looking for people that have information. The world is looking for people that have information about Christ and about God, about heaven. Concrete information. The Lord is looking for Holy Ghost men and women that have the truth. The world is looking for people that will sing the songs and something will happen. Whatsoever that the Lord will get, uh, get me engaged in, whatsoever he wants me to do, whatsoever I'm elected to do, whatsoever be the role that God wants me to play, I will play it with all my life. Discover the role that God wants you to play. Discover the part that God wants you to play. Discover it. Can you afford to detach yourself from this life serving something? Can you afford to detach yourself by way of sin, by way of anything? Father, I thank you. Because I know that my word has come out by the Holy Ghost. That's all. I know it. Thank you very much. What else? Is that not a cause? Is that no reason? Are there not reasons? Why I should give myself wholly unto this project. The reasons are bound. They are uncountable. There is a cause. The reason for the project cannot be enumerated. Can't see what else that somebody in this movement should be should be should be engrossed in. The days are numbered. The church is finished. As it were. Nude people are singing. And calling Christ. Somebody that went out. That I saw in the. Page of the one newspaper. He was wearing only pant. Woman. Only pant. And then. He said, um, I'm looking for um, that somebody that will marry me must be God-fearing man. And then I was wearing only pants in the newspaper. You see the book that is my, my wife. And I said, this person is saying God-fearing man. Today, all of them are members of Pentecostal churches. If I am wrong, tell me. Now, I want to ask Pastor B. The Ogu to come and close the meeting with prayer. Present these people with God. Pray one as to pray howsoever God will want you to pray. There is a cause. Pray. Gracious Father, you are very merciful and kind. Oh, yes, now. Yes. To choose such worms as we are that we should be co-laborers with you Lord I can't understand it your eyes have been upon us from our mother's wombs yes 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 Father, I recall yes. the story my mother told me. Yes. 
my father confirmed the story to me. That my pregnancy while I was in my mother's womb was very problematic. And there were a lot of threatening abortion. She would have miscarried me. A lot of droppings and droppings until what remained of me was too small. And the doctor said it must be flushed out. And they went to Holy Rosary Hospital, Lemekuku. And after thorough examination, the decision was taken to flush me out. My mother was given a portion to go home, eat food well, and drink it. And as she returned, she went to take her bath first. But before she came back, my immediate elder brother, a toddler of a year and who was just learning to walk, walked to the table, trying to take the glass bottle, pushed it down and it broke on the floor. My mother came back to take the medicine and behold, it was in shivers. He didn't know whether to beat the small child. He didn't know what to do. My father elected to take her back to the hospital the next day. And as they prepared to go, somebody visited. Asking where they were going again. And they told the story. And the man said, Mr. Man, don't go. You don't know what is the mind of God. Leave that pregnancy there. If it will go out, it will go out anyhow. If it will not go out, it will remain. And my father, he did the counsel. And today, I am a human being. <laughs> Lord, when I remember it, I recognize I shouldn't have been born. Lord, I recognize I should not have been a human being. And if I am because you intervened, then I will be stupid not to serve you. Yes. I will have been the most useless man on earth. Not to recognize your supremacy over my life. But then, as I grew up, I know I didn't know you. I lived my life, though a very religious small boy. I grew up serving at Mass. Being a member of the Legion of Mary, a staunch member of the Sacred Heart Confraternity, I went on and on. I was a lay reader. I did many things. In the early years of my academic pursuit, I bagged the best Catholic student, but I was a sinner and I knew it. I knew I was a sinner, a stinking sinner. My father could take an oath that I was a saint. But he didn't know I was a sinner. Until the day, this same merciful God opened my eyes. Thank you, Lord. And I knew that I was going to hell. I still remember that very evening in the refectory at the campus where a preacher was preaching Hallelujah. and exposed my life. And I was begging in my heart that he should not tell everybody. I thought everybody knew he was talking about me. And I was pleading in my heart. I make up my mind to give my life to Christ. 
That was not the face that was hearing the word of God. But that was the face that was receiving a revelation of thy word. And so Lord. Your eyes have not left me. Uh -uh. On and on. Many many things have threatened to take away my life. But God. You have been watching from on high. Yes. And you have been there for yes. me. Yes. You have not allowed them. Yes. All the cohorts. Yes. Of the wicked one. Hallelujah. To terminate my life. Hallelujah. Before. The revelation of your will for me. Mama. Hallelujah. My father and my God. <laughs> a great privilege to be born at a time like this yes. a time of horrible decadence uh -huh. it is a great privilege yeah, yeah. great privilege because Ooh, ay, ay, ay. although there is terrible evil although sin is abounding uh -huh. but the word of God that cannot lie yes. says <laughs> grace does much, much more abound, abound. Because of abounding grace of God, much more than abounding iniquity, it is a privilege to be born at a time like this. Yes. When men's hearts are failing them, my mama. when the devils are at their worst, then <laughs> to be enlisted on the side of the Lord uh -huh. is a great privilege. Yes. Should I be asked whether I, I should be on the side of the Lord or on the side of the vision? Lord, I am very sorry <laughs> for hearing that question because I should be begging you to serve you. I should be pursuing you to serve you. Lord, who am I that you should send your son to die for me? That alone, yes, make me on every day basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year. I should have no other thought in my life except the thought of your work. Yes, Lord, I remember when you allowed asthma. To hit my life. It was like a tornado. Suddenly it came. And I was dying every day. And I was dying every day. I couldn't understand it. I spent resources. That I had. And was willing to sell the only property I had. My motorcycle. To get healed. Until the medical people told me asthma is not curable. And I turned unto you, dear Lord, and began to pray. I prayed until there was no more strength in me to pray. I became confused. And I met your servant. He looked me at the eye and asked me whether there was any known sin that I was living in. I answered no. Said I should go and search. If I was sure there was no sin. That was prevailing in my life. And that I have prayed to God. To take away this matter. And he still allowed it. That there must be a cause. This story he told this night. That was the first day he told it to me. On the counseling table, he told me his story with Pye. How God, who allowed it, now eventually used it. And after that counsel, Lord, I went to do as he said. I searched my life. I turned it in and out. And then I looked up to heaven and said, Lord, if there is a purpose, you allowed this aspect. I am very sorry, I've been stupid, asking for healing. Now, have your way. 
If it is allowed by you, increase it ten times. Then accomplish what you will with it. And I will be satisfied. Lord, I remember you heard that prayer. And yes. increased it ten times. And I ordeal became worse. And then in the midst of that, you are sub called me and said I should come to lodges and help in the physical development. I came with asthma and then every day I would go out to walk cement dust the forms of fumes every night I return I will die and wake up and then it was according to me the devil was saying it must be that the GS forgot that you are asthmatic he wouldn't send you to this kind of work and then I answered the devil they told me asthma is not curable and I am now living with it now if I will refuse to do work that the servant of God has given to me to do, which I know God himself, who knows my condition, gave me through him. If I will not do it, and I will want to save my life and then live up to 90 years or 100 years, and eventually asthma will kill me because they said it is not curable. Then I choose to die at 35, doing what God has given me to do through his servant. And let that asthma that will kill me at 90, kill me at 35. But let there be a record that I have done what he has sent me to do. Lord, I took that decision. In the month of September 1996, and by the month of November, asthma disappeared from my life till today dependable father Jehovah I practically know that if I should lose my life for your sake and for the sake of the kingdom and the word of God then I will save it I am a living witness Lord, I am sorry. I am very sorry for all the dilly-dallying, for all the useless excuses, for everything that I've uh, made the work not to go as it ought to go. Lord, if I should not do it, I will die anyhow. Yes. I read of a Russian lady that they were counseling about her promiscuity about her flirting and uh, that without condom and the doctors called her to counsel her to begin to use condom he said I don't have business with that condom will not allow me to enjoy my life I want to enjoy it somebody will die of something if it is AIDS and it kills me. Some people died of malaria. It is the same death. That was what she retorted to the doctor. And went on doing escapades with sin. Jehovah El Shaddai. Why should I fear to die doing service to the master? Dependable Jehovah. My only request and heart desire. That your spirit from on high will rest upon my soul. Yes, Lord. Give me the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Because I cannot continue to minister dry. Now therefore Jehovah. Send forth thy spirit. The spirit. Yes. Excellence. Yes. Send him forth upon our soul. Yes. Yes. For yes, the yes, souls yes. of thy people. For when he comes. Every resistance will disappear. Yes. Ministry will become sweet. Yes. Everlasting father. Yes. Is it not when a knife is not sharp and somebody is using it to cut Hiroko? That is when he will have blisters in the hand. 
That is why we are putting a smoke into <laughs> your nose. Smoke into your eyes. Over the years, we have been saying we are doing ministry. We are serving God. But we have caused blisters in your hand. Because we have remained blunt over the years. My Father and my God, <laughs> I pray, shall yeah, yeah, the yeah. watchmen Sharpen the watchman. Yeah, yes. Sharpen the watchman. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jehovah El Shaddai. Almighty, you are. Is there anything too hard for you? <laughs> How can my heart be too hard for you to break? How can my eyes? Be too hard for you to open so that rivers of tears can flow out of my eyes as I behold the desolations of the people, as I behold the things, oh God, that the devils are doing in the lives ah, of men and women. Ah, ah, Lord, ah, ah. right now, the main error is on board. And the multitudes, <laughs> by reason of what they have been given to believe, will swallow the error. <laughs> they will swallow it. Didn't Pope Francis say <laughs> that he has a, a program to achieve? A set of reforms to get into the Roman Catholic Church. And after he finishes it sweetly, he said two or three years, he is done. And he will enter his father's house. <laughs> Lord, how many days do we have on it? And wow. he is releasing them one by one. For him, gays are acceptable to God. Yes. So if God has not condemned the gay, who am I to condemn them? So God has not condemned the gay. So he now owes restitution to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> yes, going by that. Lord, and they asked him and he said there is no literal hell that is not conceivable that a holy God a righteous and loving God should punish his children in a literal hell of fire so there is no literal hell and they asked him about the story of creation by God he said the story of Adam and Eve is a fable he called it the fable of Adam and Eve so <laughs> Second Thessalonians said, because the people did not love the truth that they should be saved, God Almighty Give them. will bring them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Oh my God, Jehovah El Shaddai, and the time of the lie is here with us. If the people are not saved, hey! If they are not delivered now, Lord, they will come under strong delusion. <laughs> they will come under strong delusion. And my parents, my siblings, my relatives, countless number of people that are in this system, Jehovah, <laughs> they will soon believe their lie and they will be damned. And there will be dead. Everlasting Father. Kill me if you will not wake me up. Remove me all God so that I don't come back the land again. But if I must live one more day in this world. Father I plead with you. Let it be a day to touch somebody's life. If you grant me one more month. Let it be a month to touch somebody's life. Dependable Father, I am praying and asking by the special grace of God that you make me live for this vision. Make me live for this vision. Make me yield unto it. Make me to be sold unto it that I will spend and be spent. Father, in the furtherance of this vision, in the actualization of it, Father, if it will not be so, kill me, I pray you. Jesus. 
Awesome. Father, I pray Amen. that all the frivolities of our lives, Amen. all the things that are chaff, <laughs> that mean something to any person, <laughs> Father, I pray by your mercy, yes. remove such thing from us. Amen. Expand such thing from our hearts. Amen. That only what is substantial in your eyes will become substantial in our eyes. Yes, Lord. That the things you hate yes. will be the things we hate. Yes, Lord. That the things you love yes. will be the things we love. Yes, Lord. This is the only way we can continue to live. Yes, Lord. This is the only mindset that must be in us. Yes, Lord. Lord, I pray. Father from heaven above, uh -huh. from excellent glory, yes. touch now. the watchmen, yes. men and women, yes. young and old, yes. from excellent glory, yes. remove far from us yes. every pursuit of chaff. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Arise, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Arise, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Cause the watchmen to rend their hearts. Father, ah. from this moment, that the ah. feeling of the infirmities of the lost, Father, the burden of the people that are heading to hell will be upon our souls. Yes, Let it be upon our hearts. Uh, Let it be upon us Lord. in the day and in the night. Yes, Father, I am asking that you give us no rest. Give us no peace. Yes. Until everything that thou hast stated concerning the return of the glory is accomplished in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you very, very much. Thank you. Lord, Thank I you. lift up your name. Thank you, Lord. I am asking and praying uh -huh. that you are servant, uh -huh. that thou hast uh, anointed <laughs> for this last lap of your work on earth. Uh -huh. That Jehovah, uh -huh. that thing which you have stated concerning him, mm. Lord, I am praying and asking that you do as you have said yes. concerning your servant. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we demand an end of the distractions. Amen. We demand an end of the distractions. Amen. So that in the short time remaining, yes. a swift and a short walk the Lord will do. Yes, Lord. And we will accomplish yes, that for Thank which we live. Yes, Lord. Dependable Father. Thank you, Lord. And he said, if I believed what the Christians said they believe <laughs> about heaven and about hell, oh God, he said, it will be my waking thought every day. Mm -hmm. Every night before I sleep, that will be the last thing I will rehearse. As I walk on the street, every person I see, that's the only thing I will discuss. Every day, that will be my business. Lord, that was the challenge of a communist. An atheist that said there is no God. But then, should it not be the testimony of your servants at uh. this close of age? When it is less than two and a half minutes... I don't know how many seconds remaining but one thing I know that the sounds are very much gathering storm. The trumpet has begun to sound but there is going to be a last trump that will sound and the deed will be done. But Lord, let watchmen arise. Amen. Quicken Amen. the watchmen Amen. to arise. Amen. To Amen. enter into this work. Amen. And to begin it. Yes, so that yes, you. That have sent us. Yes, walking with us. Okay. Will accomplish it. Yes, Lord. Thank you because. Thank you, Lord. you have not brought us out. So that our eyes will see our ears. No. Give us singleness of eye. Amen. That we will pursue it. Mm. And in no time. Hey, yeah. We will accomplish it. Amen. Thank you because it Thank is done. you, Lord. Glory be to your name. Amen. Glory be to your name. Amen. Glory be to your name. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we Amen. pray. Amen.